yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Like the the quantum science, just the fact that particles can exist in different states and different places at the same time, and seemingly we don't know why. Mm-hmm. We know that there's a lot of things showing that that's the case, but everybody's working really hard trying to figure out why. Yeah. I don't know. It, I think the, the deeper you look, most the people that are looking really deep into the fabric of space time are just coming closer and closer to the the that the, everything's a simulation that it might not be real. <laughs> it's just mm. all binary code. <laughs> well, I mean, binary binary code simulation is definitely a a, a vast reduction of its complexity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see how there's almost two realities that are existing at any given moment and, and it i love this metaphor of the television <clears throat> it's, it's different now because we have like these digital flat screen televisions but you think analog tv back in the day the television has two realities there's the johnny carson that you see jumping around doing the thing there's the image and there's that whole reality but then there's the other reality that it's just like waves of information that are being rendered into an image in some yeah. way and so that kind of exists here now in this situation. Like we perceive ourselves to be independent me's, each one of us, our own independent me's with our own inner life, like a texturous inner life. And we're interacting with this outside world of mostly ideas and concepts like cup, glass, physical sensation. I know how to navigate this physical sensation. We're moving from the past and into the future, you know, it starts with birth ends with death but on another level none of that is actually true there's only one sort of essence of consciousness that's operating in any given moment and these are all processes within that larger consciousness and there is no such thing as time and there is no such thing as you and me there's only i and that is true for each independent that which witnesses that is recognizing itself as i but also i am me james and you two, Tanner and Callie, are also your own me's with your own intertextuous life. So there's like this double reality thing. Mm -hmm. Like the quantum duality. It's like it is both. Mm -hmm. It's the Schrodinger's us. The Schrodinger's (laughs) us. What I've been finding really interesting recently is this idea of retro causality. So I know that there's a lot of other studies that I could reference. And by only referencing one and not being able to reference where it came from, I sound like a douche. But I'm going to do it anyways. (laughs) Which is that uh, there was a, a... project that happened or an experiment that said all right we have two groups of people and both these groups of people are going to be uh, shown a string of numbers and then asked 10 minutes later to repeat like to try to recall as many numbers as they can and then one of those groups of people would be asked to memorize those numbers a week later yeah and but they don't know that they're going to be asked to memorize these things all of that's kind of controlled And reliably, the group that would be asked to memorize it a week later always recalled more 10 minutes later than the group that wasn't asked to memorize it a week later, Hmm. which is to say that events in the future influence events in the present. Weird. And so when you think about that and you think about the concept of our perception of linear time moving from past to future as a construct of our identification with our physical beings within a realm that is not the absolute reality of existence... It gets really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like to think yeah. about it in a sense that at any point, the future me might be having a relationship with present me. Hi, pussy cat. <laughs> <laughs> might be having a relationship with present me. And so I get the sense that anytime I'm in a challenging a struggle, this is something that I've recently worked with. Anytime I'm in a struggle in my life, I, I remind myself that on some end somewhere else i've made it through Mm -hmm. and i have compassion and love from a grounded place and i'm sending that back to myself and that the future me has an effect on my present experience yeah so then later when i'm in a good space i'll think about that and i'll go back i'll emotionally time travel yep and i will send myself positive vibes to the me in the past which has an effect as well because the manner in which the past which any given present moment is not actually the present moment. It's a confluence of concepts and assumptions and, and, and renderings that aren't really reflective of what's happening in the present moment, which if we were to quantify the smallest quantification that we can measure is Planck's dis- distance, which is extremely fucking small, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which means that the present moment, even if, you, even if there is a present moment, that it's so infinitely small, you're never in it. So... The past is always a collection of concepts and ideas, and we're constantly relating to the past and to the future and to the present in this 
interdependent play. And so you can switch the way the past manifests in your presence and future by changing the way you relate to it. So, which is how people can manage to heal trauma and how trauma mm -hmm. even comes about. Mm -hmm. uh,